Hello, my name is Thad Coons with Maori Marine Products. We're going to winterize this boat today with an array of Maori Marine Products that you see uh, on the back of the boat. The first step in our winterization process is to stabilize the fuel uh, for long storage. I'm treating our fuel today with our 3-in-1 fuel treatment. It not only uh, helps uh, preserve the fuel for up to uh, 12 months, uh, but also uh, prevents uh, fuel system deposits and helps to prevent corrosion. Uh, we are using a half ounce to every gallon of fuel. All you do is open up the fuel system on the boat. And pour it in. The next step is to run the boat and uh, bring the engine up to operating temperature uh, to circulate the uh, uh, fuel that we just treated and also to uh, bring the oil up to uh, uh, to a warm temperature so to flow easy. As a safety precaution, before we run the engine, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the propeller. Uh, it's not only a, a, a good thing to do on a yearly basis, uh, uh, but it's also, uh, like I said before, safety safety precaution when you're running it. Uh, what we'll do. Uh, when we're done, we'll, we'll clean the uh, prop shaft, grease it up, put the propeller back on, make sure the lock nut's all locked tight. First, we've got to stabilize the propeller. The block of wood works really good under the cavitation plate. We take our wrench, loosen up the nut. In most cases, give it a little bit of tap, she'll come right off. As you can see with this one, it's been a while since it's been off, so it's a good thing we're taking it off. It's uh, got a lot of corrosion. Okay, now that we're done uh, running the engine and warming it up so we can drain the oil, uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, one advantage to having a, a newer style boat you know, with, a, with this uh, engine package is uh, the manufacturers put a uh, an oil drain tube on the bottom of the oil pan so it makes it much more convenient to drain the oil. Uh, the boat manufacturers tethered it to the uh, to the hull plug uh, to drain it so when you take the hull plug out you can actually pull the hose out. Much more convenient than uh, sucking it out through the uh, dipstick uh, um, tube on the engine itself. All we do is just uh, loosen up the plug, two wrenches, once it's loose, you should be able to just open it up by hand and sit back and let it drain. Now that we've drained all the oil from the, uh, from the engine, uh, we just need to uh, button it up, tighten up the uh, drain plug, and uh, resecure it. Once again, the uh, boat manufacturer makes it real easy to just uh, feed the tether back in through and put your drain plug back in place. Okay, now that we've uh, drained the oil uh, from the uh, pan through the uh, drain plug hole on the boat, what we're going to do now is change the oil filter. Uh, this particular model does not have a remote oil filter on it. It's in a conventional uh, position on the engine. Uh, so we have to get a wrench down there. Uh, we're using a cap style and uh, take it off. You loosen it up as best you can get it. Okay, and once we get it loosened up by hand, um, we'll slowly spin it off, making uh, try not to spill as uh, little oil as possible. I have one of our Malware Marine diapers, uh, un oil diapers uh, underneath it that's catching all the residual oil. And I pushed one in my, my lap here to be able to capture the uh, any residual oil. Hand it off to my friend Jimmy here. Now we're going to replace it with a Mallory Marine uh, filter uh, specific for this engine. Take the filter out of the box. We'll take some fresh Malware Marine engine oil, and we just want to coat the threads, or the, the actual seal and the threads, 
uh, maybe pour a little bit in since it's this type of a configuration. So it'll have a good prime. Fill up. Screw the new filter in place. Keep in mind you do not want to over tighten the filter. Now that we've drained all the oil, it's ready to uh, to top it off and to put fresh oil in the engine. Uh, first off, we're going to take the uh, cap off of the uh, oil fill, and this one it's fairly easy and straightforward. And Jimmy's going to uh, insert a funnel, and we're going to uh, uh, use a recommended manufacturer's recommended uh, 25W40 uh, four-stroke uh, engine oil, Mallory Marine, of course. Just a little hint, I like to remove the uh, foil off the, off the uh, cap so that it, uh, none of it uh, will get trapped uh, down into the, uh, into the engine. I'll let Jimmy pour it in there. Now that we've uh, filled the crankcase with oil, we're ready to uh, run the engine and fog it uh, for the winter uh, storage. I'm using uh, Mallory Marine's uh, fogging oil, aerosol can, very easy to use. Uh, we're going to uh, start it up, take off, remove the uh, uh, spark arrestor, and spray it down the throat of the, the, throat of the uh, carburetor uh, with the engine RPM elevated slightly. Now that uh, we're done uh, fogging the engine and uh, the engine's ready to, uh, to be uh, put up for the winter, the last thing we're going to do is to uh, change the fuel filter so we'll have a fresh uh, fuel filter on board for uh, crank up in the spring. Uh, we're now ready to uh, drain uh, the block and the manifolds uh, uh, from all uh, cooling water. Uh, please check your owner's manual. There are different configurations on how to uh, where your drains are. It's very important that you uh, get uh, that you uh, open all of them. Now that we've uh, drained the block and the manifolds, we're going to fill uh, fill the block and manifolds with antifreeze. It uh, does a couple of things. That uh, any residual water that's left in it will. Uh, treat it so it will not freeze uh, over the winter and uh, also it uh, helps prevent any corrosion uh, build up in the uh, water jackets over the winter. Now we're about to remove the drive. The first step is to uh, to remove the uh, the trim rims off of the out drive and uh, this will allow us to be able to uh, pull the drive off. Uh, this particular drive uses clips to retain the rams. Uh, other models will have, uh, some of the older models will have uh, uh, nuts and washers. Uh, the procedure is just the same. This one uh, you'll just have to use a screwdriver rather than a wrench. Okay, now we're going to uh, remove the drive. We've already removed uh, some of the nuts that retain it. There's six of them. Uh, what you want to do prior to this is there's a speedometer pickup tube that needs to be uh, disconnected on this particular model. We've done that. Also, you need to put the, uh, the drive in forward gear. This will align it so the drive will be able to slide off uh, from, the, from the drive uh, shift coupling. Now that we've removed the drive, we're going to uh, check the engine alignment. Uh, Jimmy's going to use our Maui Marine engine alignment tool, which he's going to insert uh, through, uh, through the outside bell housing and bellows into the gimbal bearing and all the way into the engine coupler. You should be able to turn this freely uh, with uh, basically with two fingers. If you can do that, uh, you're in pretty good shape as far as alignment is concerned. I also like to uh, turn the engine over and uh, check it in a couple of different uh, locations, but uh, this one's looking pretty good. Uh, now that we, uh, we're ready to in, uh, reinstall the drive, we've actually installed new O-rings on the shaft. Uh, we put the Mallory Marine uh, gasket and O-ring for the water jacket. We've used Mallory Marine uh, bearing, uh, grease to uh, grease up the slide. Make sure that your, uh, your slide shift is uh, in place and that everything is uh, lined up straight. Also on the drive itself, make sure your shift mechanism is in the forward position. Uh, we've uh, used our high pressure uh, drive shaft grease on the splines. Make sure that you liberally coat the splines and the O-rings with it. Uh, we do recommend this uh, um, basically once a year. Uh, the, most of the newer style uh, drive units have an uh, uh, engine coupler that is uh, 
greasable from inside the boat, but uh, a lot of times it's impossible to get to it. So this is the surefire way to uh, make sure that your, uh, your drive is in good shape, inspecting it uh, annually. Okay, Jimmy, let's put it back in here. Line it up with the gimbal bearing. Once she's in place, you basically lift her up and get it lined up making sure that everything stays in a line. It helps to have the prop in place to be able to uh, spin the shaft a little bit. Okay, now that we've uh, got the drive uh, back in position, uh, the last thing we're going to do is uh, to uh, uh, drain and refill the, uh, the lower unit oil. Uh, Jimmy's going to remove the uh, bottom plug first, which is a drain plug. Uh, then he'll remove the uh, top plug to vent it and allow it to drain out. Okay, now that uh, we've, we've uh, drained the, uh, the drive, we're going to refill it with uh, uh, Mallory Marine's uh, synthetic blend gear lubricant. It should take approximately one quart to fill this unit. Uh, now that uh, we're almost complete, uh, we'll fill it from the bottom up with our Mallory Marine pump. And uh, when it starts to come out the vent hole, we'll uh, insert the, uh, the plug and then uh, remove the, uh, the pump from the bottom and uh, reinsert the, uh, the drain plug. Now that we've uh, finished uh, filling the drive up, uh, the last thing to do is to top off the gear lube monitor bottle, which is located on the uh, on this particular uh, engine on the port side. Okay, now that we're done, uh, the boat's ready to be uh, basically stored for the winter. Uh, the outdrive has been serviced, the engine's been serviced, the fuel system's been serviced. Um, we do recommend that the, uh, the battery be removed and uh, uh, stored inside, or if it's got a good charge on it, uh, it can be disconnected and left in the boat. Uh, just a good idea to leave it inside. Thank you.